Hi everyone, this is uh, week number three um, for um, Hire Working From Home, um, week beginning the 25th of January 2021. This week we're going to be looking at Irradiance and Inverse Square Law. Um, I mentioned Irradiance last week when we talked a little bit about the how the brightness of the light. So this is us picking up on that a bit more at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go through what formulas you know for Irradiance, what experiment you need to know for it, and then what kind of calculations you might get. So let's just start off with the definition of irradiance. Um, irradiance being the is a measure of the amount of power being provided by electromagnetic EM radiation per unit area, which means per meter squared. Now that this statement here is a wee bit complicated, but it is the kind of standard definition of it. When it says per uh, unit area, it just means per meter squared. So what that means is it's amount of power per meter squared of um, an EM wave. Normally we'd use it to refer to light, but it could be heat, could be any other EM wave that we've got. So we also, a kind of simple way of thinking about it, it's to think about the brightness of a light source, but it's spread over what area that you've got. So if you're really far away from a light source, it doesn't appear as bright, and that's because of that power of the light source is spread over a much bigger area. Now, sometimes irradiance is known as intensity. Um, we don't call it intensity anymore. It was called that in old past paper questions, but if you are doing any old past paper questions, just remember that irradiance and intensity um, do mean the same thing. Now, irradiance itself is in, measured in watts per meter squared. Just make sure you remember on that minus two there um, because the area is underneath the fraction. For the formula, which you'll get in your formula sheet, I is P over A and irradiance is equal to power over surface area. Now we'll come back and have a look at questions on that a bit later and also we'll talk about different applications and really different types of light sources. So how does this link into what's known as the inverse square law? Now you've already actually done a little bit of the inverse square law um, when we did gravitation but we're going to officially talk about it just now in terms of light and how it works. So as EM waves uh, and light are emitted from a single point they travel out in all directions. So if you think of a single point such as a light source the light is coming out from it in all directions in a giant sphere shape round about it in all directions. Uh, we call a single point that emits EM radiation a point source. So just what it says, it's a single point source of light or EM waves. Uh, the points of equal irradiance around the point source form the shape of a sphere. So that's what this diagram is trying to show you here. You've got a light source, a point source in the middle, and there's these spheres. And this is cut in half, the spheres will go over the top as well. And these spheres of how that light is then spreading out from that point source. Now, the light source, we're assuming um, in most examples, stays constant. We're not changing the power of a light source. But as this sphere gets bigger, then the irradiance from the light gets smaller. So its brightness gets smaller, if you like, because the power of that light is spread over increasingly larger spheres. Now, um, the spheres themselves have an area. Uh, and if we go back, if we talk about the, the formula, irradiance is power over area, and that area is the area of a sphere, that's four pi r squared. So we refer to the radiance i being inversely proportional to the surface area of the sphere. Inversely proportional means that as um, the surface area of the sphere goes up, the radiance goes down, or the radiance goes down as the surface area of the sphere goes up. They're inversely proportional. One goes up, other goes down. Now, if you look at this formula here, four pi r squared, since four pi is a constant, um, then we, this is where the word inverse square law comes. So it's the inverse of the square, one over the square. So the r squared is our square part here. And we're gonna have a look at how we build the formula on the next slide, or in the next couple of slides. So we're just gonna have a look here at the type of experiment you may have to do, and you have to understand. So you have to be familiar with this type of experiment um, in the, what would be the exam, but it's for higher physics you need to be familiar with this, this type of experiment. So this is taken from BBC Bite Size, so you can have another look on the BBC Bite Size website to, have, to see how it's done. Um, but you need to be able to go through this procedure here. So here's the apparatus set up as shown. We have a, a light source, a point source of light, and this one it's just a filament lamp, and we have a light sensor here and we have a ruler to measure the distance between the light source and the light sensor. Now, the distance here is not, it's not great. The arrows aren't sitting in the right places. It needs to be from the centre of the light source to the, set, to the light sensor. This green arrow should really probably be over a wee bit more to sort of be from here to this point here. The black paper is used underneath 
to stop any reflections coming from the light bulb down off the, the worktop and then hitting the light sensor. So that's there to stop the reflections off the desk. So the first thing is we set up the apparatus as shown and we measure what's known as the ambient or the background light level um, with the lamp off. That records the light level in the room and you need to subtract that from any results that you get because the light sensor is going to pick up the background light and the light from the filament lamp. You then use the ruler to move the light sensor at different distances away from the filament lamp and you record that data. Uh, and then the, as the area of the light sensor is constant, the light sensor reading can be taken as the irradiance. So we're going to take the light sensor reading as the irradiance and you plot this irradiance against one over distance squared and you get a graph which looks like this. It's a straight line through the origin. Now, this graph displays a straight line through the origin. Now, it's important you say through the origin, which sh shows and indicates that irradiance is inverse proportional to distance from the point source squared. So it's irradiance is proportional to 1 over distance squared. Now, sometimes you'll be asked how you'd improve this experiment. So the experiment can be improved by reducing the reflections further. So right now we've got reflections off the desk. You might find that it might be uh, beneficial to maybe close blinds, close curtains, um, maybe put more black paper down to reduce more reflections. Uh, also, we could also use a smaller filament lamp or a smaller bulb, which would mean that, that it becomes more of a point source um, and reduces that size and means that uh, this, this point becomes more of a point. So let's just have a look at the formulas that we might need to use and the questions we might need to be asked on this. So we know that the irradiance is inversely proportional to the surface area of the sphere. As the radiance drops, the surface area of the sphere gets bigger. The formula for surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared, and 4 pi is a constant, so we can remove that if we need to. And the radius of the sphere, we're going to know, we're going to refer to that as a distance from the point source. It's still the radius of the sphere, but it's the same as the distance from the centre of the point source. So radius is proportional to 1 over the surface of the sphere, that's the inverse proportional part. That is proportional to 1 over 4, r, 4 pi r squared, because that's the subset of the sphere. We take the 4 pi out, so we get 1 over r squared, and we can change the r squared into a d, so we get 1 over d squared. Therefore, i is equal to 1 over d squared times some kind of constant, which we're going to give the symbol k. This gives us this here. i is k over d squared. Now, that's called the inverse square law, or it's one of the examples of inverse square law, and that's given in the data sheet. We also have this one here. i d squared equals a constant which means that the radiance times the distance squared at any point at any time for a single um, point source that's not changing its power is the same number. So k at the start, k initial, is equal to k final. This k doesn't change, which means if you've got an initial, intense, an initial radiance sorry, and initial distance, that'll be equal to the final radiance times the final distance squared. So this formula is really important for us. We change the initial and final to 1 and 2, and we get this formula here, i1 d1 squared equals i2 d2 squared. Um, it's a bit like your conservation momentum formula, I suppose, um, and we use that to look at changes and how we work out how the radiance has changed after an event. Now, problems in radiance may be asked you to consider a radiance and distance from the source before and after a change, usually in distance, and also they sometimes might ask you to confirm this relationship. And that's just simply multiplying the numbers together with the square. People often forget the square. Let's just look at a password question you would get. It's a very simple one here, just to explain how it all works. You'd be given a diagram. It says the radius of a light from a lamp at a distance of 1.6 meters is 4 watts per meter squared. Calculate the radius of the light at a distance of 0.4 meters from the lamp. You start off with your formula, one mark for that. You plug in the right, the right numbers, and it's the I2 that you don't have. It's the second the radius you don't have. Rearrange for I2, calculate it through 64 watts per metre squared. So it's just using this formula, plugging in answers correct units. Now, I said that I would also talk briefly about different types of light sources. So the light source needs to be a point for the inverse square law to, to apply. If it's not a point source, then the inverse square law doesn't work. Um, so um, a laser and a torch, we'll go into that in a second, don't work because they're not point sources. The small the point source, the more the inverse square laws adhere to. So if you have a small LED or a small lamp or a small bulb, that would follow the inverse square law much better than a larger bulb with a much larger filament on it. What that means is if you're asked to improve the experiment, then you know to use a smaller lamp, a smaller bulb, and it's a smaller point source, a smaller point, literally. So 
a torch and a laser are not point sources, and they send their light out as a beam. So the laser or the torch sends, sends a beam of light out. It doesn't go out in all directions. So it's a, a beam rather than a point source. Uh, and a laser, um, which is similar to that, which you can see in the picture, has a, a very fine beam coming out of it. And you can calculate the radius of that beam by using the power of the laser that you're usually given in watts and the, surf the area, the cross-sectional area of the beam, which would be a circle, which would be pi r squared. So this week, uh, tasks, um, we have some questions doing the problem booklet, um, which I want to go over and check your answers, get in touch with any problems. There's a BBC Bite Size quiz to do as well, um, which you can take a picture of and upload. Um, there's also some extension tasks, which is extra videos and things to read through. I've also included a um, home experiment you can do uh, to practice your graph work. Um, it's not a core task, but I would strongly encourage you to try and see if you can practice your graph drawing skills as well. One of the experiments uh, uses an app on your phone, and you can actually do the experiment at home, which is great. You'd be doing it in class anyway. And the other one is using a video to, you'd have to pause and read the instructions carefully for that one. Um, for either of them, I would prefer if you drew a graph um, and then practice your graph drawing skills. Um, you can pick up graph paper from the school and you can give that a practice um, at home. Any questions at all, just ask your class teacher and of course upload your work for review. And there will also be a quiz on Thursday to test what you've learned this week. There's also a homework out at the moment, which is semiconductors. You get a week to do that. That's you on Wednesday and you'll get another homework on inverse square law on Wednesday for the following Wednesday. Okay, enjoy the work this week, guys, and I'll speak to you again next week.